www.50beta35.5 has been out since 10 days and has been downloaded more than a thousand times, which makes around 100 downloads a day. Hooray! I want to use this video to highlight a couple of things that are new. First, three little things for VVVV. And to show you that, I will open this Molecule Viewer app, which, by the way, you can also get uh, from VVVV Molecule Viewer on GitHub. It's a fairly complex app which allows you to build molecules um, by dragging and dropping those atoms here. But that's not the point. The point is uh, you can now um, navigate your projects and uh, look inside sub patches and then go back and hide them with Alt 3 again without leaving changed marks on patches. So what used to happen in previous versions is whenever you navigate into a sub patch, then the parent patch would be marked as changed. This is no longer happening, which allows you to navigate your projects without being asked for saving things that shouldn't be really counted as changes. The second little thing I want to show you is that now in receivers, the channel list is ordered alphabetically. So that's just a little convenience for you that allows you to find your channels much quicker. And the last little thing, if you happen to be working with HTTP GET and POST notes, you may have noticed that in recent releases, they've sometimes been freezing when accessing certain uh, URLs, and this has been fixed with those new versions of the nodes. We have the HTTP GET and HTTP POST nodes now, and they have been rewritten and they don't uh, show this freeze anymore. Okay, those were three little things I wanted to show you. Probably the most interesting thing is the changes to the editing framework. There's been a blog post detailing all the changes and I want to show you how easy it really is to work with those. Just quickly, if I create a Bezier editor, I have now the Bezier editor views in also DirectX 11 versions. So I can choose that and create a renderer, DX11. then simply connect those and we will also need a cursor and here be careful there is a new cursor special for the editing framework this one so we choose that we are using a group node here to connect them both and the only connection from the PC editor to the cursor goes to the selection input so now that's it we now have a fully functioning Bezier editor. Um, that does all the things you would expect it to do. And the new thing is that you can now select uh, knots of the curve by pressing Q or Shift Q and then press uh, space to select a key, uh, a knot, and space again to unselect it. And now you can just do changes using the keyboard. And also if you want to unselect, uh, press of course anywhere just in the canvas, then you want to select one of the handles. You want to do so also with the keyboard you press W to switch between the handles, then press space to select it and do your changes. And as you also know, you can of course save those uh, curves. And then also new is a reader that allows you to read those curves and display them with the Bezier spline view. Let me choose DX9 here. So I'm connecting that here. Uh, going 
to a DX9 renderer and pressing load to load the curve and here of course I can adjust the resolution freely. So that is just a quick overview of what's new with the editing framework. You should really have a look at it. It's quite powerful already. And that's it for VVVV. Now let's move on to what's new in VL. To show you what's new in VL, let me quickly create a VL template. First, a little thing. Should you ever happen to come across a broken VL document, then you should know that VL is already uh, creating automatic backups every other five minutes or so. And you can go to show backups to see previously working files of your document. That was just a little thing. And now three uh, quite bigger things that are new to VL. We have XML nodes now, we have MIDI nodes, and we have reactive nodes. First, XML. There is a whole new category of XML nodes, which does not include the file reader and writer file. Reader, as you can see, we have next to the normal uh, byte reader, we have the string reader, of course, and now we have a dedicated JSON and a dedicated XML reader. And also same for writers. We have the JSON and XML writer, all fully asynchronous, of course. So now let's just have a quick look if we are using the file reader XML. And I'm choosing just any uh, VVVV patch here, which is an XML file, actually, as you know. And then I will read that. And you can see there is already some data coming out. And just to show you that there is actually something in it, I'm saying X elements by name. And I want to show you how many pins there are in this document. And it tells us that there are 13 elements that are uh, have the name pin in this document. And of course, in the XML category, you see that we have a checker for validity. You can have a string and parse it to X element or return any X element as a string. And the same for JSON. So when talking of JSON, we are always only having to deal with JSON in the string form. But as soon as we go into the object form, we are in X element space. So even when you have, when you're loading a JSON file or parsing a JSON string, then you will uh, then operate using the X uh, element and the X attribute nodes where you can join and split uh, X elements and attributes. And of course we have X path and XSLT. So we've covered pretty much uh, the same things that we already had in VVVV. And there is also a blog post uh, that details that information for you. Next up, MIDI, which we have also introduced with the blog post, you better read yourself. But I will go over it for you quickly. When we type MIDI in the note browser, at first no nodes show up, but only this uh, package. So we select that. That means that the nugget package is now referenced for this document and we can use the nodes. So basically you will be using the MIDI in and MIDI out nodes. You see that uh, I just create the MIDI in node. It doesn't have an enabled uh, pin. But as soon as I connect a device downstream, you see that it is now connecting. And the device I have downstream is just the Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth. And I just make this one uh, connection here and I can already start playing some notes. I guess that sounds crappy because I'm just recording this through air here. The crazy thing about this is 
that the connection here is not going through the main loop. I can demonstrate this by setting the main loop to something like one and still be able to play notes as you will hear. So that's cool as it means that you can do MIDI processing in VL now which is totally independent of a main loop. And just to show you quickly how to read notes, you need to note state out and just connect it here. And you say you're interested in note 60. Or if you're interested in the spread of all playing notes, you use the notes state node. You can also connect it here. And here it will show you all the notes that are playing at the same time. And to do the same with not notes but controllers, you can of course use the controller state and controllers state for the spreads. One more feature that we've uh, included here that has been asked for many years is that device handling is now dynamic. So I can plug in uh, a new MIDI device and it will automatically show up here. I, and even when you plug it out and plug it in again, it will just work. I cannot show you this at the moment because my MIDI uh, device is also the audio recording device. But it is demonstrated here in this blog post and um, you should read it anyway for um, many more details. And then finally, uh, reactive programming, which has been introduced with another blog post. And this is really a beast. That means it will, of course, need its own set of tutorials, really. But just to give you an idea what it can do for you. Earlier, I was mentioning that uh, the MIDI in to MIDI out operates outside of the main loop. And this is because it is based on observables. And if the MIDI library can do that to work outside of the main loop, that means that you can also make use of those observables in such a way. There are many peculiarities to this, and I will show you just a very simple example now. But really, you will have to read the blog post and try it out for yourself until we uh, provide you with more tutorials on this. So say we have our big patch running and independent of its frame rate, we want to make sure that every 100 milliseconds our patch also sends out a MIDI node uh, to an external device. So we will start with an interval reactive node that takes a time span, which we provide with the from milliseconds node. And here we specify 100 milliseconds. So now we have an observable here that is pushing every 100 milliseconds. And then we say for each of those pushes, we create a note. And add a MIDI note on. And we want to have it random notes. 20 to 60 and give it a, some velocity. And now we want to send that to MIDI out. And you hear that's already running. And just to demonstrate uh, that this is independent of the main loop, I can again throttle the main loop here down to one and you hear our sound is uh, being created independently. So much regarding observables, there's of course much more to know and your best bet is to start reading this blog post uh, which explains more about it and uh, definitely yes we need more documentation and even tutorials on this. Probably Node will be a good time to learn about this. And that's it. Thanks for watching.